Attention gamers, swing champs in League of Legends are ones whose performance is seemingly dependent on which team they are on. They are typically high skill based champions and when selected on the enemy team they almost always are being played by a 69 million mastery point one tricking smurf who has that champ's name tattooed onto their knuckles while being the living embodiment of that character. But when picked by someone on your own team they are typically a first timer trying that champ while under the influence of THC brownies in a quantity large enough to inebriate an obese elephant to the point where they feel like they themselves are on the rift. Katarina is a swing champ and thanks to recent changes allowing her to benefit from pretty much any random assortment of items, she is rising to the top of the I wish she was perma bandwagon in league because as the famous saying goes, with great power comes great amounts of mechanically challenged morons trying to abuse that power and so today we are going to take a look at a case of Katarina syndrome. Symptoms of which include insisting on retrieving your daggers at all costs. and showing off your spins at the most inopportune times until all of your whirls and twirls cause you to be that girl, that robs four innocent people of their precious LP. Now some much needed context for the following piss fest you are about to witness. My own appearance will be in the form of an ABC Yumi because after spending days making commentary so clever that it's cringy only for YouTube to deem it not worthy of my weekly allowance, I sometimes sell out on streams by allowing donations to drive my champ selects to provide me with some income because after all, bands are needed in order to make one dance. And secondly this Katarina is actually a close friend of mine who has no idea that I'm publicly roasting him in front of thousands of people to prove that these rift syndromes don't discriminate against anyone and so I would appreciate if you could visit his stream that I will link in the comments after this video and politely let him know that he has been torn a new one. Now please ensure that you have given that subscribe button the D followed by a light tap on that upward thumb button's ass and let's get into the chaos. Okay so as mentioned in the intro I was being a sellout sack of crap and turns out when people get to pick who you play, they just wanna see this levitating anime cat that fetishizes about fishies all game when you play her being built 9 different ways to Sunday but it turns out the enemies weren't expecting this auto attack tabby to whip out the double heels which baited out their squeals as I dismount flash slap a hoe for first blood. Then it's time for this bedazzled ash hole to meet the wrath of kitty and while my fur may be purple, my balls were left blue. But enough about me let's meet our test subject who wastes no time exuding the first symptom of this syndrome by fetching his dead bitch dagger which prompts some opposite day esque overextend festival but one of them knows something that the other doesn't which is that there is a psychopath on her way to proclaim she sexually identifies as a dragon and so yeah she got pistol popped lit on fire and burned to death. Meanwhile I am doing just about as good as you would expect a floating queef kitten to do it making gold numbers float out of these dying hooded midget bodies when a thought crosses my mind that I am kind of overextended with no vision so I should go ward, and you might be thinking wow Rav is improving but as I am wondering where their shiv might be, there is a giant flapping dragon 10 feet away spectating a brawl to the death between her and our jungler so by the time I latch onto this dragonfly's tit it's no longer breathing leaving me and my support to be the ones to embarrass this simp in front of her desired species. And while that was happening we see mid lane that dreadlocks Donny has acquired himself one of those red rings and this would typically mean don't test your luck with that but Katarina's must live by the motto they have painted on their bedroom wall in the basement of their mom's house which reads, daggers are worth dying for and I guess the pistol pimp got greedy after being given 8 free autos so he decided to just ejaculate the remaining 36 to secure the kill. Then we decide that depriving that dumbass dragon of being one with her kind while she is dead would be the move and thanks to a celeb shot from the ghost of Orin's dead ancestor we are able to synchronize a team slap on the ash but the semen spawn of my mid laner's fornication with the fuck up fairy is here and I am thinking this will end poorly for me until our team pet demogorgon comes in for a head on collision with the brainless bride and I snipe the kill before edging with death like I get off to it while simultaneously trying the blue ball look on Barak. And when the candy cane crackhead gets word that her co-workers were getting kills in river, she runs over thinking maybe that will be the trick to earning her first kill ever in league but little do they know there is an envious wyvern fanatic who is not about to be deprived of her big O with her wing lolly con and cat's response to her entrance is to just zoom around in the mario mushroom zone as her teammate dies and the dragon gets stolen before then deeming it a good time to port back into the now 1v2 to do her spins which in this case were sins, punishable by death as you see me floating in like a disappointed zamboni at the end. 
Back to bot and in chat you can see that Katarina is continuing to have a good time but at least my tiny amount of damage is accommodated by a tiny hitbox as I swerve the bloodstained bride's bind and then strobe light her ass knowing she probably doesn't have her E key bound which presents an interesting conundrum of what happens to anus injected canes during a golden girl routine but he gets shit out per use and she dies. Then it's tapped at ash time as we chase and I get in a brief right click off with the archer hoping to be able to say remember that time when ash lost to a yumi but she pusses out at the last second. And a minute later I ask my support if he can take my wall hacking virginity which full transparency it went so well that it would be a dramatic oversight to not mention that we both got screwed real good on my first time. But it looks like the feeding efforts have mobilized and are now en route. To give my foes some loot and I can't falter Brandy Boy's logic here is no matter how much you are getting shafted mid lane the proverb of 200 years will dictate that you will still have two levels on their ADC so he gets into a clumsy uncoordinated shit fest of a 1v1 until freaking dad has to come in and ruin the fun as nothing can make this situation any worse other than maybe wasting her flash as well before dying. And this has seemingly given their ADC the confidence of one with a giant stone cock as she ignores the voice of reason in her head telling her that the adjacent mountain is about to give birth to a being who wants her dead as she follows Kat's pioneering performance of wasting summoners for no reason and I come in to earn my shutdown bounty with a single piss chime attack. Then I do a quick loop around knowing that few things in life are more certain than a Shivana foregoing any opportunity to suck off a dragon all alone and I bring along the team crutch from the candy cane forest for this one to experience a takedown so she can know the feeling she has been giving to the enemies all game. This is followed by me having a lapse in judgment thinking that a useless cat and a feeding one can win a single 2v2 as I uh, strategically, Dismount to eat all the CC for her to assist me in proving once and for all that dogs rule and cats drool as we just barely escape our bad decision in a cramp inducing amount of ass clenching circus of cuckery. But like a masochist looking for a release I continued to group with this feeding Felicia and in case it hasn't been made abundantly clear in the last year, no syndrome will ever trump rap syndrome as hitting W would have been the move instead of the resounding F I demonstrated which was then followed by a pissy plant into pistol popped combo for my inting cohort. Then Kat decides the best way to climb her way back into the game is to blindly overextend worse than a dislocated knee with cataracts which results in her maintaining a keen sense of consistency in her performance thus far. And as if this game wasn't already an accurate depiction of your typical experience on this game, the ABC Yumi support cane and feeding Kat were accompanied by a malding top laner and a seemingly AFK jungler. A few minutes later I see, a B, so I run up to give him the D. Yippee, I know cringe AF, oh, and despite me dodging our own teams or an alt, two cats do indeed prevail over one giant bumblebee on the food chain so Miss Candy Canes gets her first kill pog in the chat and then we join into the drag pit festivities as I shove my thumb up her ass and proclaim this probing is known as zoomies as we catch the PMS prom queen and I nab that cash for myself. Then the stable source of passive income for the enemy team is all alone up top and sure enough she has a visitor which presents her with a choice plan an escape route through the cove or port to her dagger and bitch you guessed it ops for the dagger into a genius world record for most useless Katarina alt ever before porting closer to danger in a fight that admittedly turned out to be closer than I think any of us would have imagined. But at least I can rely on this bubble wrapped bribe being about as useful as a knitted condom as I anticlimactically right click some piss chimes into her for another easy kill. And if the saying that laughter is the best medicine were true, then this cat's next play would fucking cure cancer and for that I do commend your noble efforts Brandon and after all, it did keep this bipolar buffoon distracted long enough for me to come in and strove her shit back to base. That said despite a severe case of Katarina syndrome being present, if bad decisions were a currency their Morgana would still be the richest bitch on the rift as she just hands my team another wad of cash. And one of the problems with playing this kitten shit is that being tethered to the tit of a grade A dimwit puts you in some questionable predicaments so I say screw this I'm outy and off to hang with my boy Bob the bovine builder as we chase down Shiv Simp and I think I just became the first Yumi in history to ever get a kill with Gale Force. But not to fear the dizzy dancer is here off on a mission to prove that feeding and flanking are not mutually exclusive as she paces around nervously planning out her next death in meticulous detail until deciding that going straight hungry hippo status in the face of a full Lucian ult is the play. Which leaves us here as he later described as us being the homies with the extra chromies in an unsalvageable situation and despite his very best contributions in this last fight, we oh so surprisingly lose this one. 
Now everyone please head over to his stream and ask him if he remembers the time that Ayumi out damaged Ekaterina and give him some much needed support after this roast. Rav out.